Hi guys, Pear from Into Fly Fishing, and this is the third part of our Stillwater series, where we'll cover 10 of my favorite stillwater trout patterns. We spent another great day out here in the Western Cape catching trout, and all of these patterns proved to be very successful. Before we dive into the specific patterns, let's first look at what kind of flies you get. Firstly, you get streamers, which imitate bait fish or leeches or something of that nature, and then you get nymphs, which imitate buzzers or chronomids, or even mayflies or caddis larva. Another kind of stillwater pattern you get is an attractor fly, which aggravates the fish and then provokes a predatory response from the trout. So the first fly I have here is a damselfly nymph, which is very often confused with a dragonfly nymph. Damselfly larva are found in aquatic vegetation and don't move that fast. It's a very delicate nymph and it doesn't move as fast as a dragonfly nymph. So it's most effectively fished quite slow and very often dead drifted in a combination with other larvas. The second fly I have here is one of my own personal favorites and it's called the white death. The white death works very effectively on an intermediate or a floating line with a very long leader and it's stripped just below the surface. It especially works well in low light conditions and a very fast quick strip often gets the take. A fly that you've seen me tie before and a very unconventional fly is called the blob. This is a fly that originates from competition fishing and it uses a fritz material which is a translucent and very brightly colored material to create an attractor pattern. It resembles a combination of a daphnia and it also imitates an egg. It works very effectively when it's used in combination with other still water flies such as a woolly bugger or a dragonfly nymph. Another unconventional fly is called the booby and it's named as such for very obvious reasons. This fly can be tied in the form of a woolly bugger or a blob or any other attractor pattern but the main functional part are the two foam eyes. This is not meant to make the fly float but rather if you use it in conjunction with a very far sinking line when you make strips the fly dives down in a very attractive manner for the fish. We spoke about dragonfly nymphs earlier and one of the best imitative patterns in my opinion is called the papa roach developed by a South African angler called Herman Boetus. This is a beefy pattern with a lot of movement. And the idea is to tie it in such a way that it's neutrally buoyant. The one pattern that doesn't need any introduction is the willy bug, and in my opinion, it's the best fly ever created. You can tie it in any styles, include any color or types of material, and it just hammers fish. This is one of my first go-to stillwater patterns. If the woolly bugger isn't big enough or doesn't have enough meat, the slum buster is the way to go. This fly was developed by John Barr, who also is the creator of the very popular Copper John. And here I've tied an olive, which is an exceptional color. This fly incorporates zonker material, which gives it a lot of movement and it creates a big bulky fly. One of my all time favorite still water patterns as well. If the fishing really slows down or you're fishing a stretch of water which has seen a lot of pressure, buzzers are the way to go. Buzzer fishing is also known as chronomid fishing and it's one of the most effective ways to catch trout. The best thing about buzzer fishing is you can use multiple flies and cover multiple columns of the water. Buzzers can also be tied in various different colors with black and olive being the most common. Another pattern which is actually also a kind of buzzer is called a bloodworm. The bloodworm larva is surely one of the greatest stillwater patterns of all time. Here I've tied it in a very classic color form which includes a little bit of peacock curl. Lastly we have a fly called the Dolbach which is actually a very classic stillwater fly. I've replaced the jungle cock cheeks which is very scarce and very expensive with some fluorescent orange fritz. This is a very effective color combination. And there you have it, 10 of my absolute favorite stillwater trout patterns. I hope that you found this video helpful and if you did please subscribe to our channel and turn on the notifications then we can let you know as soon as we go out again and fish and release new content. Until next time, cheers. Another unconventional fly is called the booby and it's named as such for very obvious reasons. <laughs> another, <laughs> another unconventional fly is called the booby and it's named as such for very obvious reasons. <laughs> The main functional feature of this fly are these two um, <coughs> <laughs> The main functional part are these two round balls <laughs> Okay, foam eyes, how's that?